Okay. We are good on the live stream. Let's make sure we're good over here. Okay, we're good over here. Get people in the Zoom room. Okay, we are all set in all the places. So we are on day three of the challenge, how do I want to feel? And I think this one is a little complicated. Um, I shouldn't say complicated, but this one um, feels a little less straightforward to you all uh, in what you're supposed to be doing and asking. So I'm gonna kind of revisit that a little bit today. And I'm actually going to go right off of the worksheet that I put up for you. Um, so if, if you have your um, weekly challenge worksheet, the how do I want to feel worksheet, I will go into a little bit about why I'm asking these questions and um, what you can do with them. So this week I asked you to keep track of, number one, how often you get down on yourself or frustrated with your behavior. In other words, what you don't want. So whenever we're getting down on ourselves or frustrated with something, um, I'm going to keep it simple and, and talk about sort of food because that's why you all are here. But so you're down on yourself or frustrated about the way you're eating or um, uh, something happening with your weight or you don't like your, the shape of your body or whatever it is. And you get down and down on yourself and frustrated. I'm, I'm asking you to be aware of how often you do that throughout the day. And as a way to disrupt that pattern, and rewire those neural pathways, I'm asking you to instead ask yourself, how do I want to feel? So when you, let's say, let's say you step on the scale, say you stepped on the scale this morning and it was, um, it didn't budge or it was up a pound or something like that. And immediately due to memorized emotions and responses, your brain starts to go down this track of, it's frustrating. It's never going to happen for me. Why can't I get this right? Why do I always do this way? And it starts to, to kind of tumble down this track of negative emotion, right? And just to stop, pause there for a second and say, all of the reactions we have to things in our lives are a set of memorized emotions and a memorized patterns of thinking and ways of being and ways of feeling that we picked up um, throughout our entire lives, starting in early childhood. And what we don't ever do is stop and consider that there might be a different way to think and subsequently feel uh, because we end up just perpetuating how we currently feel by saying, well, that's just how I feel. I can't feel any different. That's just how I feel. We never believe that there's a way to be more constructive about our thoughts or more constructive about our emotions. We believe that our emotions are ruling us rather than us having a say in our emotions. That's what we've been taught. That's how we have um, uh, trained our own brain over and over and over again, because we keep repeating the same thoughts, same emotions, same thoughts, same emotions. And that uh, wires in that neural pathway pretty strongly. And we don't, it never occurs to us that it might not be real or that we might be able to think or feel something differently. Now, this is a more complicated concept, one that I go in really in depth um, in the shift and, and help you understand the science behind it and what I mean by memorized emotions and how we can change that and all that kind of stuff. But this tool of asking myself, how do I want to feel, is one of the tools that I teach, one of the tools that we use, because it disrupts your brain pattern. It disrupts the automaticity of the way that you've always thought and the um, uh, messages that you always tell yourself, it disrupts it just enough to see if there's any other information in there. So going all the way back to the first example, let's say you step on the scale and it's up a pound and you run with that vibration. This doesn't feel good. I don't feel good. I don't like this. It's never going to work for me. Da, 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 da. If you were to disrupt that and say a simple question, how would I like to feel? How would I like to feel when I step on the scale? What would I like to be possible for me? Um, what do I want, right? 
and not what do I want to happen? In other words, I want the scale to say 20 pounds less, but how do I want to feel? I want to feel empowered. I want to feel confident. I want to feel peace. I want to feel ease, right? Whatever it is, these are the kinds of things people say they want to feel. And so we start there and disrupt that negative pattern and say, how would I like to feel? Now, some of you would say, but I don't feel, I, I mean, I'm not that way, right? Like I don't feel peace and I don't feel ease and I don't feel um, confident and empowered. So isn't that just going to make me feel worse, right? And the answer to that is at first, perhaps, but as you start to open up the possibility that there's a different way to feel, and then going on to the next question, which I will in a second, realize that, that there's a pathway towards, or there's a pathway that leads straight to exactly how you want to feel, but you have accidentally been going down this same repetitive pathway of what you don't want to feel. And the more you focus in on what you don't want to feel, the more you're going to bring about the same repetitive behaviors, thoughts, feelings, and emotions that bring you more of the same. So this is how this plays out. You step on the scale. You don't like what you see. You're frustrated, you're irritated. It's never happens for me. I'm never going to get there. It's going to take too long. I don't like how this feels. I don't want to feel this way in my clothes. And then you go to the kitchen to eat breakfast. And what do you have? You have this negative emotions, negative vibrations, frustration. This is never going to work for me. It's too hard. I don't like this. It's going to take too long, right? And then what do you do? The decision about food comes up and it becomes, why even bother? It doesn't even matter. It's going to take too long. It's nothing's working for me. This thing that I thought was going to work for me didn't work for me. So now I don't know what to eat. Now I'm really confused. And wow, you are in this washing machine of negative emotion. If you were to instead ask a very simple question, which is how do I want to feel? How do I want to feel? I want to feel peaceful. I want to feel at ease. I want to feel confident. I want to feel empowered. And you can stick with that emotion and you can say, it would feel really nice to have those feelings. Those are the feelings that I'm trying to create in my life. Those are the emotions that I want to bring about in my life. And then you go eat breakfast and you say, okay, what is the choice? What are the choices that I can make for breakfast that are going to make me feel more like that? More empowered, more confident, more in control, more at ease, more peaceful, whatever it is, more peace, whatever. Now you have the ability to make a different decision that has a very physical impact on you, but you don't have the ability to make that decision when you're stuck in that negative washing machine over and over again, kind of dragging you down, right? Or maybe you do make a decision to restrict yourself or diet, or I can't have this and I didn't like the weight on the scale. So now I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to cut that out. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to punish myself. For what just happened on the scale, you're perpetuating this negative cycle, and the there's going to be the um, opposite reaction in you, which is, hey, we feel bad, we are focused on negativity, we're focused on these negative emotions, vibrations. We got to do things to keep us feeling bad. That's what the law of attraction is all about. Which I haven't talked a lot about on here, and I go into it a lot more in the courses um, from a scientific standpoint, but. The more you spin in that negative cycle, the more you are attracting that negative energy, frequency, and vibration to you. So making decisions on food from this place of restriction and deprivation is only going to continue to perpetuate that negative emotion and negative cycle of restriction, deprivation, and negativity. And down you go until you know three or four days later when you binge or overeat to compensate for all these negative emotions you're feeling and the cycle continues. So one of the ways we break that is to say, how do I want to feel? And as you saw in um, question number four, what action, no matter how small, are you willing to take towards what you would like to feel? I would like to feel empowered. Great. What action can I take to feel more empowered? I would like to feel confident. Great. What action can I take to feel more confident? Rather than what action can I take to avoid feeling more frustrated, right? It's the wrong way to look at the problem. So question number two in there was, how often do you make a plan for what you're not going to do? In other words, step on the scale, frustrated, I'm irritated with myself, I don't like what I see. So then I'm going to make a plan to not do all the things. I'm not going to eat sugar. I'm not going to eat carbs. I'm not going to overeat. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, right? From that negative emotion, you make these plans for all the things you're not going to do. Negative vibration creates solution out of negative vibration. 
creates a feeling of negative vibration, creates actions that are going to continue to perpetuate that negative vibration. We have to stop that cycle and get out of it. And the way we do that is to flip it and say, well, what do I want to feel? That's why we're doing this challenge this week. It's com complicated is not the word. It is, um, it requires focused attention. It requires a certain um, level of faith and belief that there is a different way to feel, that there's a possibility that you could have a different experience if you started asking different questions, if you started being different in the situation, could things turn out differently? Problem is we hold on so tightly to what we've been fed, which is it takes restriction, it takes deprivation, dieting is hard, weight loss is hard, it's going to take so long, I'm never going to get there right? We have all of this negativity wrapped up in how we, what we believe to be true about our weight and our bodies, that it becomes really vulnerable to think that there's a different way, to believe that it's possible that um, there's a different way to know what information is good for us. There's a different way of eating that might feel, make us feel supported, right? We have this belief system that's in there that says, if I'm not focusing so strong on my calories and if I'm if I'm not dieting and I'm not um, you know laser focused on the restriction then I'm going to swing and gain weight right and what I'm trying to teach you is that those swings come from the dieting and the restriction when we are more aligned and when we make decisions in favor of how we want to feel and a vibration that we want to embody whatever that is for you confidence, empowerment, peace, ease, joy, feeling more in control, whatever it is. When we make decisions in line with how we want to feel, we naturally stop these huge pendulum swings. It's a little bit more complex how to explain that to you. It would take me you know, a longer training on that. But the takeaway is we're doing it backwards. We're doing it backwards. We focus on what we're not going to do. We focus on what we don't want to feel. And we make solutions and decisions from that place, which just perpetuates exactly what we're trying to get away from. So question number three is, what is it that you'd like to feel? What would you like to happen? So you step on the scale. You're not happy with the number that day. What would you like to happen for the day? Would you like to, can you look at the end of the day and say, how do I want to feel today? I want to feel like I made decisions for my body that felt good. I want to feel like I made decisions for my body that felt empowered. I want to feel like I moved my body today in a way that made me feel strong and confident. I want to feel whatever it is. When we step on the scale, like I said, you have a tendency to go down this rabbit hole of, I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this. And then all your thoughts, feelings, behaviors, and actions funnel down that rabbit hole. We have to disrupt that pathway and say, okay, the data that just showed up on the scale was this data, hard stop. What I attach to that data now is going to have an impact on how I feel the next day and the next day and the next day. So if I can make a intentional decision to attach what I'd like to feel, how do I want to feel at the end of the day? How do I want to feel this morning? How do I want to feel an hour from now? And number four, what action, no matter how small, am I willing to take towards how I want to feel? If you take that tiny step and the next tiny step and the next tiny step and the next tiny step in that direction of how you want to feel, what I can promise you is you will get to the outcome you want. That's what we teach so much. That's what I teach so much about for 11 weeks in the shift is how, what vibration is, how to change our vibration, how to manage the vibration, why it's important, what's happening, what's happening in the brain chemistry that makes um, vibration the most important thing to take, uh, to pay attention to, um, and all, all of these things. So I'm just, I'm giving you big takeaway concepts to be able to utilize tangible tools to make things different right now for you. So I'm not gonna overcomplicate this challenge anymore, but that is to say, how do I want to feel what steps am I willing to take towards how I want to feel rather than all of my mindset being focused on what I don't want to feel and then what I'm not going to do in relation to what I don't want to feel. Make sense? So I don't like the way I feel. Therefore, I'm not going to eat this. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to have sugar. I'm not going to. That's all in that negative spiral. We want to break that circuit and focus on how I do want to feel and what actions will take me closer to that. 
Okay, so that is what this challenge is all about. Um, you guys are sending me your questions more privately. So it's making me think that this challenge is kind of making you guys think a little bit more. Um, I don't see any comments from you all that are live today. Um, nothing in here on the Zoom. So if you guys don't have any questions, I will see you tomorrow. Enjoy everyone. Have a great day.